Hi everyone, August 17, 2018. I hope you're having a nice start to your weekend. Those of you who don't have to get up tomorrow to work. And those of you who do, I hope you had a good Friday night. Your brain contains magnetic particles and scientists want to know why. Wow, our brains contain magnetic particles. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, in a remote forest laboratory in Germany, free from the widespread pollution found in cities, scientists are studying slices of human brains. Labs isolated, location 50 miles or 80 kilometers from Munich, gives the researchers the opportunity to examine a bizarre quirk of the brain, the presence of magnetic particles deep within the organs' tissues. Hmm, are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know, those nano particles, the heavy metals, nano particulates that they are spraying and we are breathing. Scientists have known since the 1990s and they were spraying nano particulates into the atmosphere in Germany in the United States, in virtually every NATO country. I only say virtually because there might be a NATO country that they not uh, that they didn't start the geoengineering, the chemtrail spraying, until maybe the 2000s. I don't know, but uh, yeah, they've known since the 1990s that the human brain contains these particles. But researchers didn't know why. Some experts propose that these particles serve some biological purpose, while other researchers suggested that the magnets, magnets came from environmental pollution. However, some parts of the brains were more magnetic than others these areas containing more magnetic particles. But most of the brains studied had very similar distributions of magnetic particles throughout, suggesting that the particles are not a result of environmental absorption, but rather serve some biological function. Well, if these particles are in the air and human bring, beings are breathing these particles and they're crossing the blood-brain barrier, I would think that, yeah, there would be a very similar distribution. Unless somebody is like really snorting up the air really hard. Maybe runners would have more magnets in their brains. I just thought that it was an interesting article to point out. And isn't it interesting that they discovered these magnetic particles in the human brain in the 1990s? Well, we had x-rays prior to that. Brains were being studied prior to the 1990s, and they just came across these particles in the 1990s. Okay, I'm going to go through several articles, and I hope that you circulate the information. Microwave frequency electromagnetic fields produce widespread neuropsychiatric effects, including depression. Now, I'm sure I've done videos on this study in particular, but it's important to bring up again non-thermal microwave lower frequency electromagnetic fields act via voltage-gated calcium channel activation. VGCCs, that's the voltage-gated calcium channels. Well, they occur in very high densities throughout the nervous system and have near universal roles in release of neurotransmitters and neuroendocrine hormones. 
Soviet and Western literature shows that much of the impact of non-thermal microwave exposures in experimental animals occurs in the brain and peripheral nervous system, such that nervous system histology and function show diverse and substantial changes. And that may be generated through the role or the roles of voltage-gated calcium channel activation producing excessive neurotransmitter neuroendocrine release as well as oxidative, nitrosative, stress, and other responses, which has a role in producing neuropsychiatric changes in humans. Two U.S. government reports from the 1970s and 1980s, or up to 1980s, provide evidence for many neuropsychiatric uh, effects of non-thermal microwave electromagnetic frequencies. Well, how could that be? Because we're told that there are no effects. It's safe. These effects, sleep disturbance, insomnia, headache, depression, depressive symptoms, fatigue, tiredness, uh, dysesthesia. I don't know what that is. Um, let me just pause for a second. Okay, it is the abnormal sensation. It's feeling abnormal sensations. Unpleasant abnormal sense of touch often presents as pain. Pain. Okay, getting back to the effects. Concentration, attention, dysfunction, memory changes, dizziness, irritability, loss of appetite, body weight, restlessness, anxiety, nausea skin burning, tingling, dermographism, and EEG changes. In summary, the mechanism of action of microwave electromagnetic frequencies, the role of the voltage-gated calcium channels in the brain, the impact of non-thermal electromagnetic frequencies on the brain, extensive epidemiological studies performed over the past 50 years and five criteria testing for causality all collectively show that various non-thermal microwave electromagnetic frequency exposures produce diverse neuropsychiatric effects. So parents, what the hell are you doing giving your kids these gadgets that emit really dangerous frequencies. But this article pertains to parents that are on their gadgets and the amount of time that they're on their gadgets, they're causing behavioral problems in their toddlers and kids. We know that too much time spent on social media and with technology, it can have a negative impact on both physical and mental health in adults and that kids who spend hours glued to screens don't fare any better. But a new study from the University of Michigan shows that the amount of time parents spend staring at their own screens has a devastating impact on the mental health and development of their children. Do I sound a little mm, perturbed? I am. Because I notice when I go out and about parents who show up at when I walk around the track here they show up for their kids football game they sit in their air-conditioned trucks or cars and they're staring at their cell phones, not engaged at all with what their child is doing on the field. And I saw just the other day, which broke my heart, but I will say that what I was, you know, picking up, it was a presumption, so 
something else could have been going on. But a mother shows up, she's sitting outside her car, and her daughter, her overweight daughter, who might have been, I don't know, 11 or 12, was sitting there. And for the entire time that I was watching them, that mother never looked at the daughter. The daughter would get up and run down the hill and then run back up the hill and sit next to her mother. And then the daughter would get up and sit a ways away from her mother at the uh, these two benches, benches that are at the track. The mother the entire time was staring at her cell phone. And that kid looked miserable, looked depressed. Now, I don't just stop there and consider what I think is a fact. I mean, well, for all I know, her daughter might have gotten in trouble and there was tension between them. Uh, look, so many, you know, th there could be so many reasons why I was you know, viewing that dynamic between mother and daughter. But I go into stores, and when we've had the power outages here, I end up at McDonald's having my coffee and checking out, you know, the Wi-Fi and the power outages and all this, and I see all of these kids sitting in McDonald's eating food that's going to destroy their health, but mommy or daddy, or both, staring at their cell phones. I have seen this over and over and over again. And I look at the kids, and they look depressed. More time parents spend on their phones and other devices, even TV, the less meaningful interactions they have with their kids. When a child's time spent with their parent is interrupted by technology, the child feels frustrated and unimportant. This then causes the child to feel the need to act out in order to gain the lost attention back, most often in a negative way. And you know what happens then? The child gets in trouble. Will the parent ever look at themselves? Will they ever get the connection between their children acting out and what they are doing? Oh, well, that would mean that the parent would have to face themselves and recognize that maybe the interaction here, maybe I'm contributing to this. Hey, wow. The study found that even a small amount of interruptions to parent-child engagement due to technology are associated with kids' behavioral problems. Now we can't, we cannot assume a direct correlation. However, there does seem to be a relationship. So, is there a relationship between a parent who ignores their children and that child's behavior? Come on now, we all know there is. So yes, I would even, I would go so far as to say there is a direct correlation. So it's clear that spending too much time in the virtual, virtual world as opposed to the real world is having detrimental effects on the health and well-being of adults, teenagers, and children. Some other negative impacts, yes, vision and eye health, mental health and depression, cardiovascular health, and increased risk of diabetes, Next, uh, neck, back, and other muscular skeletal problems due to poor posture, brain development, and learning problems, attention deficit problems, sleep problems, how to protect yourself and your family? Put the technology down. And that parents need to be told this means that we have something very wrong going on with those parents. Limit screen time for everyone. No phones at the dinner table. 
pick other activities instead of movies. Get outside, leave the phones at home, put the phone on airplane without going anywhere. Why don't you just leave the phone at home? It was not too long ago that we couldn't take the phone everywhere. So we were glued to the phone and we never even thought about its absence. So clearly people are very addicted if they can't do that, especially for their children. So this cell phone addiction is destroying wildlife. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Yes, growing evidence that our addiction to cell phones could be impacting brain functionality and be the cause of stress, anxiety, insomnia, and the lack of attention and focus. Oh, that's in the human being, but it's having an effect on mammals and birds and insects and even plants. All right. Well, just thought that I would bring this to your attention. Once again, those of you who know this, plants, the metabolism of plants, it causes significant changes demonstrated at cellular and molecular levels. Homing pigeons, red fox, deer, uh, they use magnetic fields for a sense of direction, worms, fruit flies, mollusks. And we're destroying all these cell phone towers, all the Wi-Fi, all of the smart meters. Evidence is accumulating. We have so much evidence. And it pisses me off when they write, birds in particular may be highly susceptible. We know that you turn those frequencies up to a certain level, you can, you can cause serious internal bleeding, they explode internally and drop from the sky. Oh, wow, massive bird deaths. We know this, but we're screwing around with their ability to fly where they want to fly because we are messing around with their own magnetic reception. But this is a new study. It's a new analysis of 97 peer-reviewed studies conducted by Eclipse, a biodiversity and ecosystem project funded by the European Union. Road rage explains cell phone radiation lowers impulse control, disrupts blood-brain barrier. Wow. Okay. Cell phone radiation adversely affects the brain. That's not breaking news. We've had credible U.S. military research on that subject even longer, even before 1972. Don't talk while driving. You know what happens when you're driving? and your windows are up, the, the pulses of radiation become more intense because you're trapping those signals in your car and they're bouncing around your car. But when you're driving and talking, the phone signal must move to several wireless towers as you're talking or if you're on a train um, and those waves when your phone is looking for a signal, that's when it's pulsing the most intense frequency your way. Very dangerous. But yeah, all of this, all of this microwave radiation explains an awful lot of the behaviors that we are seeing in adults that don't seem to be able to restrain themselves. They have a lack of impulse control. Bacteria, mobile phones, and Wi-Fi, a deadly combination? Oh, it certainly is. Bacteria exposed to mobile phones and Wi-Fi radiation turned resistant to antibiotics. Oh, really? Okay.
So we have an awful lot of viruses, bacteria that, well, we're in the antibiotic era, aren't we? So we loaded people with antibiotics, doctors, loaded people with antibiotics. And now I'm even wondering if that was deliberate so they have, you know, their, um, what is it, plausible deniability. Well, we've been shooting people up with antibiotics so much that they've become resistant. And perhaps it's the Wi-Fi world that we're living in, or both. Both are bad. Um, you know, I couldn't believe how many people were friends who were going to the doctor. They didn't have infections, but the doctor said, well, just take these antibiotics anyway. And they were doing it with dogs and cats. And boy, you want to lower your immune system? You just keep taking antibiotics. So, do we hear anything about this on our mainstream media? No, we don't. And yes, there are studies that prove it. An evaluation of the effect of radio frequency radiation emitted from Wi-Fi routers and mobile phone simulator on the antibacterial susceptibility of pathogenic bacterial listeria and E. coli listeria monocytogenes, cytogenes. Uh, yeah, well, exposure to radio frequency, electromagnetic frequencies, within a narrow level of irradiation and exposure window makes microorganisms resistant to antibiotics. This adaptive phenomenon and its potential threats of human health should be further investigated in further experiments. Electromagnetic field induced biological effects in humans. It is well known that weak electromagnetic fields or frequencies could cause all sorts of dramatic non-thermal effects in body cells, tissues, organs. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity is a phenomenon characterized by the appearance of symptoms after exposure of people to electromagnetic fields. It is characterized as a syndrome with a broad spectrum of nonspecific multiple organ system uh, symptoms, including both acute and chronic inflammatory, inflammatory processes located mainly in the skin and nervous systems, as well as in respiratory, cardiovascular systems, and muscular skeletal systems, or system. It's a, there's a broad spectrum of clinical manifestations, even derm, dermatological disease, a number of people suffering from electrohypersensitivity or electromagnetic hypersensitivity in the world is growing, describing themselves as severely dysfunctional. How often have I read in the comments section from so many of you that you can barely function well, guess what? I identify. I relate. Uh, it shows multi-organ non-specific symptoms upon exposure to low doses of electromagnetic radiation, often associated with hypersensitivity to many chemical agents, multiple chemical sensitivity and or environmental intolerances, sensitivity related illness. Years ago, I was doing research on electromagnetic hypersensitivity and learned that the two are associated, chemical sensitivity and electro hypersensitivity. And in that paper, it was saying that those who are chemically sensitive are far more likely to be sensitive to the electromagnetic frequencies. I thought that was interesting. I was never chemically sensitive until I took these medications, put on the market as safe, and 
had a stroke. And I did come across a paper that found that there needs to be more studies on the association between the thalamus and my stroke was a thalamic stroke, the thalamus and chemical sensitivity. Yes, we're living a very dangerous time when our environment now is assaulting us from every which way. Or should I say, we are assaulting the environment from every which way. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that that form much better. I'm going to uh, do another video on this alone. But to get you started, if you're having difficulty with your doctor and they don't recognize hyper um, the electromagnetic hypersensitivity, you might want to click on the link below to this guideline and print it out and hand it to your doctor. Chronic diseases and illnesses associated with nonspecific symptoms are on the rise. In addition to chronic stress in social and work environments, physical and chemical exposures at home, at work, and during leisure activities are causal or contributing environmental stressors that deserve attention by the general practitioner, as well as by all other members of the healthcare community. It seems necessary now to take new exposures like electromagnetic fields into account. Uh, I have told my doctor and several times actually, asked him if he finally did do some research on electromagnetic hypersensitivity that the World Health Organization has recognized. And his office is so Wi-Fi that I think he has brain damage. But no, you know, he, he, he just, well, he's a doctor, he's smart, and I'm stupid, and therefore he's right and I'm wrong. Even though I explained to him you know, I was an attorney and I know how to research. And then he just smiles. Many people are suffering. Many people are suffering. And you know what? With these magnetic particles in our brain, with these frequencies that we are now saturated in 24-7 and can't get away from, the frequencies are affecting those med uh, magnetic particles. I'll link below to everything. Parents, there's too much information out there that has informed you that this technology is destroying your kids. You don't have a right to bring life into existence and then destroy it. 